on Legion Azure here, like always. And instead of two and a half weeks, maybe a week, I've had this. This is a DLC pack for Call of Duty. Hey, man, I know it, it may not be, like, the most up-to-date information for Call of Duty. As someone that loves Call of Duty, I'm just checking it out pretty much for me. You like it, you like it, you don't. There is a red X that you can click. Let's get into it, check it out, see what it's all about. Let's see what they're doing with Call of Duty. I played the beta for World War II. Uh, for PC, but I would never buy another Call of Duty for PC. I wasted the hundred dollars for the remastered because they hid the remastered behind a paywall, which was Infinite Warfare. Fucking cocksuckers! Uh, biggest waste of money ever. You can't even get a game on any of those on PC anymore. That's just how trash it is. So I will never waste my money on a Call of Duty PC again. This one seems like it's holding the test right now. People still play. I, I have some friends on Steam that still play the Call of Duty. World War Two, and it and it can kind of get some games going, but on Xbox and PlayStation, it looks like it's just full full frontal, man. It looks like it's just going nuts. So I really wish I had an Xbox One to play it. It looks good. So let's just see what they're doing. Because for me, content gets real. Call of Duty real World short. War Two was about honoring the story of the world's costliest war. And with the Resistance DLC pack, we really get to continue that story. This next chapter oh, really dude. puts you in the heart of Story being a Resistance it? fighter. No, maybe not. We're really going to take you from three iconic Resistance themed maps, a brand new War MP map, and our next chapter of Nazi Zombies. For the DLC season, we are very much pulling from historical reference to try to make a really holistic DLC theme. Early on, Resistance was something that really struck a chord with the team. It was something that we were really passionate about. We got a real taste for it in the single player campaign. Tonight, we take back our city. These were not just your standard soldiers. These were civilians. These were everyday people who were fighting on the Allied side. People were in disguises. They were underground. Clandestine operations took place in speakeasies like this around Europe, where they tried to disrupt the Axis and German war machine. Yeah, buddy. There's so many ways to resist, and there are so many different types of resistance uh, efforts from the German resistance. resistance to the Czech resistance to the French resistance. So each operated differently, Czech. and we're depicting that in each map. Our first map is Valkyrie, set in Prussia, Hitler's Wolf's Lair. Oh, looks badass. Those were a group of officers. Was that the assassination like attempt? Hitler, but also as many other yeah, uh, high-ranking officers as they could. We wanted to design that map for multiple play styles. The outsides of the map, there's a lot of sniper lanes there. But if you work your way through the middle spaces and through some of these other um, different bunkers, you're going to have a lot of run and gun. You're going to have a lot of shotgun. Ooh, roasting. So our second map is Anthropoid, set in occupied Prague in the Czech Republic. It's the assassination attempt of the second hand of Hitler. He was in charge of controlling the city of Prague. So it's an urban map, but this map has a lot of height variation as well as some really strong, tight interiors that are going to give a real wide variety of gameplay. It's looking good, man. We're really <laughs> proud of bringing that back aim, the Modern Warfare 3 favorite map, Resistance, which is called Occupation in our game. It's set in Paris. That was so iconic to the resistance movement that it was important for us to have that map. It's on the neighborhood of uh, Montmartre, uh, so you can actually see the Eiffel Tower in the distance. <laughs> Long sidelines, so you get a lot of play with mountain division, and you can bring out your LMGs, put them up on ledges. It's still a really fun map. Give of course, we've got a bomb. brand new war mode called Operation Intercept. Okay. And this places you right in the heart of the FFI, or the French forces of the interior. The great thing about war mode is we really get to try things that are really new and unique that you haven't seen before. Fans are going to be excited well, about awesome. the mechanics in war mode and how they coincide with the theme of the map. Your first objective is to rescue the resistance fighters. After that, you capture some radio equipment okay. and you lead the attack. Oh, that's sick. Zombies. And the next chapter in Nazi Zombies, The Darkest Shore, the most terrifying chapter we brought to date. I have a question. I'll save it for the end. For this next chapter in the game, our oh, characters, creepy. they've uh, received intel about the movement of Dr. Straub. He's gone to this foggy island just north of Germany. 
we really wanted to play with something new in this map. We, we wanted to play with this idea of what happens when fog rolls in. You can't see them until they're five feet away from you. It's really creepy. There's that sucks. Of things that could come <laughs> out from the fog. For the Darkest Shore is that when we have a new weapon called the Ripsaw. My favorite weapon in the game is far. It is a combination buzzsaw, gun, and it handles zombies up close and at a distance. We've oh, gotten shit. experimental with some of the, uh, the gameplay here, and we've created a new zombie. This is a zombie that is clever, that is strategic. It is uh, one of the scariest creations <laughs> that I've ever seen. What the shit was that? There's a lot of content in this DLC package. Right. I see what you're doing here, Sledgehammer. I'm liking this it. This is something that we put a lot of heart and soul into. I'm liking it. So it's it. really important to us that these maps will deliver on fans' high expectations. We're looking forward to the next DLCs because we get to talk about different phases yeah, of the conflict and explore different parts voice of the world. Crack. It's the biggest, most exciting DLC we've ever offered. And you fucking and we can't dead. wait for you to get your hands on the resistance. January 30th. All right. I'm not He's late. Pass and get the Carrington bonus map. Carrington bonus map. So, I've walked, because I can't play it, because I don't have an Xbox One and a capture card to restream this kind of stuff, Um, I've watched a few people play this game, and it gets old real quick. Um, When I used to play Call of Duty... It used to get old. I had to really like Call of Duty. And playing it is different from watching it for me. I am somebody that can get all the satisfaction and all the enjoyment watching someone play a game and not have to play it myself. Um, specifically, like maybe an RP, like Skyrim, uh, Mass Effect. Those games specifically are e not not maybe not them. Those genres specifically are easy enough. Um, and in general, watching any game is not that big of a deal for me. I get the same enjoyment watching the gameplay than I do participating in it. And sometimes, in some ways, I, the fact that I don't have to deal with actually playing it, like horror games, they're fun to watch. I don't want to go through the stress of playing it. Um, but Call of Duty is a game that I enjoy watching it, but it gets boring. Playing it, different. I was watching something today, and I honestly was like, all right, let's mute this person's stream, and I'm just going to go watch, like, Emmy JP, uh, JP play They Are Billions or something. I'm going to watch something on Netflix or whatever it was because it's the same four damn maps. And I remember that when I played Call of Duty, every time there's a new Call of Duty, getting max prestige in, like, a month or two or whatever, um, or less, whatever the goal was, um... That I had a lot of fun because I was making people get mad, rage quit, and I was just owning them. It, Call of Duty is the only game that I'll brag that I was good at. Because it's probably one of the games I was the best at um, for me. I played a lot of games, Rocket League and all that stuff. And besides RPGs, you know, kiting enemies, uh, Call of Duty was an, uh, an online game that I was, I felt exceptional at. 40 bomb, no problem. Or more, uh, but I don't really play that much, so I'm not I'm not that good anymore. But that was the most fun. 16 hours a day, every day, you get good at a game. You predict people. It's easy. But that's what kept me going is to see how good I could get, getting all the attachments completed and unlocked, all the kills with all the guns and all the variations, even the heartbeat sensor, even in like Modern Warfare Three, that stupid grenade launcher gun, you know, unlocking all that stuff. Uh, was the drive. It wasn't early in Call of Duty. Early in Call of Duty, I just wanted to see how good I could be. But later on, when the game kind of started really getting bad, uh, which was after Modern Warfare 3, the game was not really playable anymore. Um, it became, uh, during Modern Warfare, it was, it was always about the camos and stuff like that. And, uh, one of the things I remember is, man, there's like five maps, and that's like it. There's no maps. There's nothing to do but just unlock stuff. Create entertainment with other people. Start talking trash. When Obama was elected president, oh boy, 
There was a lot of shit that people like that love to say, and we had shit back for them. Um, because Call of Duty is very ra- racially motivated in the in the diss talk and the trash talking, um, and that was always fun. And one of my favorite situations was there was a group of well, it was like two in my group it was like two white people, three white people, no, two white people, two Mexicans, uh, maybe a third or fourth white person. I I don't really remember. We were a collective group versus like a group that were very proud to be all black people, and they were talking about you know. That's why all the fucking football players are black. And then we're like, who's the quarterback? It's the white guy. And someone said, it's one of their friends that wasn't all that funny. He decided to bring out uh, Tiger Woods. And I was like, no, 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 man. He's whiter than me. We get him. We get Tiger Woods. And they're like, you're right. You're right. And it was just, it wasn't like the N word or, or anything racist towards white people or anything like that. It was, um, we were trash talking in the form of, uh, what do you call it? Stereotypes and things of that nature. Nothing directly attacking an individual for who they were. That was the point. That was what made the whole interaction one of my favorite interactions in college because nobody was being outwardly mean or, or racist or anything like that. We were using stereotypes against each other that were funny. And although it, it, although all the negativity was, it really first started from the shit talking about how that we were bad, even though we beat them. Uh, and then just trash talking, you know, whoever they could, whoever didn't get a lot of kills or they died a lot. Uh, and then by the third time, the third victory in a row, you know, second victory to the third, we were doing all this other hyperbole bullshit, whatever, joking around. And by the third one, it was like, oh, GG's man. We're like, yeah, good stuff. And that was the end of it. Cause usually and you get really pissed on a game and you talk some shit and you call someone a slur for gay people or whatever, uh, you just leave. You're like, all right, I'm out. F this guy. Peace. You're 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 a queer or something. And then you go and everybody's like, fuck that guy. And then you find it, you jump another map. You're like, oh, look who's back. The fuck boy. And that's how it always goes. But when you, when you stay in that group, uh, two things happen. One, it gets real, real bad. Uh, and somebody that says a lot of horrible shit is usually the first one to leave after a game or two. Or when people are not idiots and they don't start randomly throwing around slurs, but you try to be clever about, you know, it's almost like you're being clever about racism. But that wasn't the intent. That wasn't the, the motivation. It was, especially when they were talking about all the athletes being black. That I, I understand and I didn't get mad about it. I was like, oh, shit. What am I going to say? What am I going to get this dude back with? And, like, let's hope one of my other friends doesn't say something stupid. And so the other thing that happens when you stay in a game like that is you try, you talk so much trash, some of it being a lot, a lot of swear words and actual anger, to then not being an idiot and being racist but using stereotypes as, like, your your instrument, um, which provoke laughs on both sides. We were, everybody was laughing. And then... Uh, by the end of it, you're just like, man, they didn't get all that, you know, they probably thought some of us were, uh, more of us were white, but it was like two of us. So and I thought they thought they were talking to a bunch of white people. They weren't. But I think at the end of it, they thought, oh man, these honkies, <laughs> they didn't get like real stupid and say a lot of stupid shit, you know? And I, cause I definitely know that's, there's nothing any other race can really say about a white person that really uh, triggers a white person. Really, there's there's nothing. Cracker is not, you know, a thing. It really isn't. Uh, but I think they thought that they we did, as a group didn't go over that line, and that is for me one of the, the and that happened eight years ago, probably more. And that is one of my most vivid and favorite memories about Call of Duty is that people that probably had a, an actual disagreement and were really talking some real shit about how how shit the other team was. And instead of getting super negative and super just really gross about everything because you're online, uh, it became a who can clown the other person the best without crossing that line. And it was really fun. And for me, that's what Call of Duty is all about. It's just all about the ribbing, the trash talk, and making people cry because they get so frustrated because they thought they were a god at the game and they really weren't. Uh, one of my favorite things is to just constantly kill the same person over, let it hide behind that wall, let that dipshit run by, 
oh, here comes the guy that I don't like, kill him, and just really own that guy. Uh, and then they get you back to the lobby, and they're just so ass mad. And you'd be like, dude, you're ass water. Get the fuck out of this game. You need you need to return. You go back to GameStop because you know you bought it there. And go get like the My Little Pony DLC or something. You know, and just making people just so mad uh, for not and not being overly negative. That's that's the best way of doing it. Um, but I, I've rambled on a lot. That was that was my personal favorite thing about Call of Duty, and that's what kept me playing through all the lack of maps uh, until we got to about nine to ten or nine to twelve maps or whatever it was. Um, and then back in the day, there wasn't a whole lot of gun DLC either. Um, I like to see Call of Duty implement more gun DLC. That would be really cool because it's always very stagnant. We have the same guns. Um, I would love them to have a whole separate type of attachment system, um, that they could implement as well. That'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, I've rambled on a whole lot. So if you stayed at the very end of this, Thanks for, thanks for that. I, I do appreciate it. Leave a thumbs up on the bottom of the video and let me know if you stayed to the very end. I do appreciate that. It's really crazy that this video is really long and most likely people won't watch it. So uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Once again, my name is Ezra. I'll see whatever video I'm doing next. Later, guys.